Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm going to be talking about is remote design leadership. I joined Mahara during the pandemic when I moved from South Africa to the UK. Our head office was in London but I had a studio in Brighton. As we weren't using the Brighton studio it was a good idea to close it. It was getting cold in London. It's so cold. And one of my colleagues suggested that I visit the Bangkok office where it would be a little warmer. My team were distributed all around the world and I was able to still lead them even though I was in a different time zone. I've been leading remotely for nearly two years now, so I thought I would share a few tips and tricks. As a leader, I spend most of my days on video calls with my team, the other leaders and most of our clients. I communicate through video calls, through Slack and email. In order to keep connecting with my team, I've had to create a bunch of rituals that ensure that there's effective communication and we're very intentional with the time that we have because it's not like I can just walk into an office, walk up to their desk and have a conversation. There's usually only one or two designers per project. So as a function, we have daily stand-ups. This is a great opportunity for the team to connect with one another, to talk about what they're doing that day, to discuss any challenges they might be having and an opportunity for them to ask me any questions and for me to talk to them as a collective. I also like to have one-on-ones with each of my team members individually. This is a great opportunity for me to just check in with them, to inspire them, to motivate them and give them the mentorship that they need to do their very best. I have weekly project reviews where I bring the designers together, where we discuss their work and I give them direction and make sure that there's nothing blocking them. This helps them be prepared for any internal reviews with our engagement teams in engineering, where we usually prepare prototypes that we can walk people through and that way when we go to client reviews, we're best prepared to take everybody through the journey and everybody is aligned. This also has a great takeaway. Using prototypes, it's easy to follow, to understand the journey and to reference at any point during the production process. We use Figma to do most of our designs and prototypes and we use FigJam to do most of our workshops. I've never really believed in micromanaging talent. I've always believed in being more of a genius maker than a dictator. So it's no different for me allowing the designers the freedom to do what they're there to do. I don't like to sit over their shoulders. I don't like to tell them how to do their job. What I like to do is just nudge them in the right direction and make sure that they have everything they need. I learned about servant leadership in one of my previous roles and so I'm there to help the designers be the best that they can be but ultimately they need to self-manage. What I do encourage them to do so that they're not sitting in meetings all day is to block out sections of their day so that they can focus on the work that they need to do. In order to unite the team I have to communicate effectively frequently to ensure that everybody is aligned to our vision. How we stay consistent and effective is that we have an internal design system that everybody in the team is used to using that has already been tested and it has been developed by engineers so that we get to production as quickly as possible and we don't let standard repeatable processes hold us back. To ensure that as a team everybody is heard, we have monthly retros. This is an opportunity for all of the team to come together to talk about what is working, what isn't working and to action some of the change needed. I'm a very relaxed and approachable person so anytime any of my team need me they know they can just reach out and I'll always make time for them. Do miss Going into a studio, I do miss being able to walk up to people and have a conversation about the work they're doing, being able to see work on the walls and being able to critique things all the time is fantastic. But given that we don't get to do that, I do encourage everybody to share their work as much as possible. 
Being in Bangkok, I do go into the office from time to time. I do like seeing my Thai colleagues and even though I don't really lead them, I do enjoy engaging with them and being a little social from time to time. As a company, we encourage travel. So my team can literally work from anywhere in the world so long as they're where they need to be for meetings and that they do their work on time. Most of our clients are in the UK and in the US, which are really two very different time zones. My day starts way earlier than everyone else, but what I do is I work from the afternoon into the evening. Sometimes I jump on calls at midnight to work with our US clients. Culture is not something that you create. It's something that in time you develop. And when you notice it and you keep wanting to do it because it brings a lot of joy, that's what I believe you foster as a leader. Something that happened last year was we decided to have a sandwich making competition that this year turned into a dessert making competition. It's simple. I give a brief, a deadline, and a budget and everybody makes their sandwich or dessert whatever the challenge might be they record it and then we sit as a team and watch them and then vote for our winner today i'm making an ice cream sandwich working remotely as a design leader is not always easy but it's certainly possible by finding ways to create a relaxed atmosphere and being intentional with my time, I've been able to effectively lead my team from anywhere in the world. I hope these tips have been helpful to anyone who's been struggling to lead a remote team. My name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment and stay cool.